Hello everyone and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you're a subscriber. I'm always happy to have you here. My name is Penny and this is Little by Little. So I had originally thought in this video that I would provide some details as far as the house itself. Um, I did after filming this particular episode, uh, filmed kind of an add on for that. Um, about the house and found that no matter how many times I tried to record it, I couldn't get it down less than 15 minutes. And I thought that's way too long to tack on to the end of an existing video. So I have decided instead to leave that off of this video. We'll focus primarily on the piece that I'm going to build today. And then I will release a second video at a later date, probably um, in the next week or so, with all of the details for the house so far as it sits. So in today's video, we are going to be building a matching credenza for the desk for the study of the new house. And this little credenza will have two deeper drawers for things like hanging manila folders. And then on the other side, it will have a set of cupboards where we can store things like extra photocopy paper or printer paper, uh, as well as general office supplies. So that's what's on the agenda for today. I have also created um, a little printer using some foam board and some chipboard uh, to put on top of that as well. Um, I did not record that because I found that on another person's channel. And if I can find it again, I'll put a link to that down below so that you can uh, create that little printer if you so choose. As always, the cutting instructions are provided in the description box below. And let's get started on that credenza. We're going to start by drawing some lines on our pieces so that our dividers and our shelves stay as straight as possible. So we're going to start with piece A, the three pieces marked B, and the one piece marked C. So let's start with A. Now I've already drawn my lines because when I was designing the piece it was important that I knew exactly where things were going to sit. But I'm going to give you the measurements in metric so that you know starting from the left to the right where you need to mark these lines. So this is my base piece and all of the upright dividers um, are going to sit on top of this piece. So you will need to make measurements at three millimeters, 34 millimeters, 37 millimeters, 66 millimeters, 69 millimeters, 98 millimeters. The total length of that piece is 101 millimeters. And each of these smaller spaces are three millimeters wide. On all four of these pieces, um, you will notice that piece C is a little bit narrower. There's a reason for that. I need to accommodate for the width of the door when it's closed. Um, I'll explain a little bit more about that when we get to that point, um, but trust, that I didn't make an error there, that it is supposed to be a little bit narrow. The distance though for measuring out where your shelves are gonna be is the same for all four pieces, which is why I've kind of lumped them together. So for these four pieces, starting from the left, you're going to measure at 33 millimeters and 36 millimeters. What that's going to leave you with is one space that's 33 and one space that's 34. These are going to be upright. Also on these two, it doesn't matter whether the top is 33 or 34. It does however matter that all four are the same. Otherwise, your shelves are gonna go at an angle. So I've just decided to do 33 millimeters on top. There's no logical reason why I made that decision. It's Kind of a flip of the coin because as I said it doesn't really matter. So make sure once you've done those measurements that you've set them all or marked them somehow and I've just marked 33, 34 on them. It's easiest for me. Inside pieces so one of your B piece and your C piece you'll need to do those measurements on both sides because there will be shelves coming out from both sides of those two pieces. So in choosing my drill bit, I've chosen a 
0 0.07, that's 0 0.07 millimeter drill bit because that's probably as close as I can get to the same width as that stick pin. So drilling those holes, we're going to go in from the left, from your three millimeter mark, you're going to go in an additional one and a half millimeters to your right and a millimeter and a half from the bottom. And then on the 66 millimeter line, and then from your 66 millimeter line, you're going to come back to the left one and a half millimeters and then up from the bottom one and a half millimeters because these are the two spaces where your cupboard doors are going to be. You'll see there's some little bit of wood filler here. It's because I originally drilled them from the wrong end and then realized my mistake. So I've covered those up so that I'm uh, not distracted by them and uh, going to make another mistake and re-drilled my holes. Um, I unfortunately already had this piece on when I realized my mistake. So I had to actually drill it from this side, which is not a big deal. I'm going to start constructing the piece starting from the left and working my way to the right. So the first piece that we're going to put on top of A is one of your B pieces. So this is one that is only measured on both on so this is one that is only measured on one side. You don't need it on the outside of the credenza, just on the inside. So we're going to attach this piece on top of the base so that it is at a 90 degree angle. Again, paying attention to which one is 33, which one is 34. And using those guidelines that we've drawn, we'll place it on top of A. And I like to use, if you've watched my channel at all, you know I use these a lot, my one, two, three blocks to help keep everything nice and square. But I also need to make sure that we're flush on both the front and the back. Now that that piece is dry, I'm just going to flip it up on its end. And I'm going to add my first shelf piece right here in between these two lines. Now this piece will be piece E and you'll have uh, two of those. So we're going to put our first one in here. Um, now you'll notice that this piece is not as wide as the uh, the side piece and that is because we're leaving room for that cupboard door. So if you've decided that this is the back then we're going to put it flush against the back of the piece and then straight up and down on a 90 degree angle. Oops, wrong way. There we go. So you should have three millimeters left at the bottom. So I'll glue that in and then I'll give you a closer look at that. Okay, so, so far your piece should look like this. And our next piece to go in will be PC. So this is the one that's a little bit uh, narrower than your two B pieces. And this is going to sit in here. And it should be flush with your shelf, not your base. So we'll put some glue here and here, and we'll throw that piece in. Again, making sure you're paying attention to where your 33 and 34 is. Our second E shelf will go in next and it will sit in here. Following the guidelines that you've drawn in there. Now 
another divider so this is another B piece and it's going to sit here I'm going to put my glue quite to the end because this piece does not come quite to the end So this divider, like the first one, is going to be flush with the front and the back of the base. Piece D, which is slightly wider than these two pieces, and that's going to sit as your third shelf, and this one is going to be flush with the top and the bottom. All right, and our last divider, which is piece B, and that's going to sit on top of the base and against the shelf. Now that this piece is put together, be aware of course of what your front and back is because your front has these two pieces recessed. Turn it over so that you're on the back side and now we're going to add the back. So this is the thinner craft wood and it's just going to cover the whole base uh, on the back side. So we'll add our glue on all of these spaces and then I really need to weight that down because the thinner the wood, the more chance of warping. So let's talk about the top pieces. So my top pieces are actually going to be doubled. I'll have one piece of the uh, 1 16th millimeter wood and one piece of the 3 32nds of an inch on top of that. So I'll start with this one and it is going to sit flush with the back. It is the same distance across as the base of the piece. But when I tip it up, you'll see that it actually comes out about an extra millimeter towards the front. And so I have to drill the same kind of holes as I did on the bottom, um, but they're going to be at slightly different measurements because of that extra distance coming out the front. So I've measured in four and a half millimeters to account for this three millimeters here. And then I've, instead of coming back one and a half millimeters, I've come back two and a half millimeters. So four and a half from the sides and two and a half from the front. And we'll just drill our holes in here. Now be very gentle. Um, the thinner your wood, the higher your chances that it could split. So I would say just be very gentle, just gentle pressure and let the uh, drill bit do the work. All right, so we're going to attach this first top piece like so. And I need to make sure that I really um, apply some good firm pressure because again, with thinner wood, it not only does it uh, crack easier, it also warps easier. So we'll start by putting our glue around all four of these. And then I'm going to use some masking tape and some weights to hold that piece down until it dries. So let's put our front piece on, make sure that the holes are towards the front of the cabinet. And again, you'll know which one is the front by that recessed piece here. And we're just gonna slide that on like 
so. And I'm going to use my masking tape. And then I'm also going to weight it with my blocks. Do our doors next. So our doors, and you can dry fit them if you wish, it's probably a good idea, are just going to sit inside of that recess that we created on the inside. And so these, we have a little bit of prep work to do. Um, we need to create the holes for the hinges. And so those will be on the two outside corners of those doors. And we also need to do a little bit of beveling so that the doors open and close just a little bit easier. I'll take my drill and I'm gonna drill into the width of the door and we're going in one and a half millimeters from the edge and then directly into the center of the, this three millimeters, which makes it uh, one and a half millimeters from the top and bottom. Be careful, you wanna make sure that you're going straight up and down. Uh, you don't want your uh, drill bit to come out the side. And we're gonna go in roughly about a quarter of an inch. So how do you tell how far you've gone in? I generally just, once I've gone in a little bit, put my thumb at the edge. And then when you pull this off, you can see how far you've gotten. Um, and then we have to do the same thing on the other side. So when you're making doors that are going to open, um, if you don't take off a little bit of this top edge on the side where your hinges are, it's going to make it really tricky to get the door open um, easily. So I always taper off that top edge. And the way I do that is just taking a little bit of sandpaper and just hold on to your piece and we're just going to gently drag it down the length of that uh, sandpaper. And you can slowly start bringing it up to an upright position as you go. And that will give it a nice rounded finish on the front. So now when I place that in there, there's nothing there to catch and it will open a little bit smoother. I'm going to take just a little bit more off. I don't think that'll work well. All right, so I'm going to do that to both of the outside pieces. So on this one, this is where our hinges go. So we're going to do this top edge here. So now I'm going to put in some pins for my hinges. I'm not going to cut them off just yet, but I do want to make sure that it's going to sit in there. So if I push that in as far as it'll go, don't force it any farther with the head of the pin, just as far as I've drilled.
So I'm gonna pull them out of there one at a time and cut them off. All right, let's work on our drawers next. So I'm going to start with building the box that is going to be the drawer. Now, I never make the box, the inside box, as big or as high as the drawer space. It just makes it that much more difficult to pull the drawer out and push it back in. So I generally knock off about a quarter of an inch or somewhere in there off of the top. Now the front face, which is the drawer front, that's going to fit um, nice and snugly in there, but the drawer itself in behind it doesn't have to be that high. So basically I'm going to have to measure the distance across um, by the height that I need, and then I'm just going to create that box out of the thinner wood. Inside of the drawer is fairly simple, you're just making a box. Um, and so I've cut out my base of the drawer. This is the back of the drawer and then the two sides that will come up. So it's not a full box. We're missing the front side because that's where the front of your drawer comes in. So I would say if I could say anything at all about this part of the process, it's that the cutting instructions that I've given you are really more guidelines. Um, I always recommend when you're making drawers that you measure this area after this part is put together. You'll get a much better fit um, if you've done that. So when measuring, keep in mind that this drawer front has to fit flush inside. Uh, so the box that you're gonna create has to sit back three millimeters from the front. So keep that in mind. When you're making your base piece, You'll want to cut it so that it is three millimeters short of coming flush with the Once your base is complete, your back piece goes on next. And then your side pieces have to be cut so that they're also giving that three millimeter space along the side. So let's have a closer look by building it here. All right, so this is my base. This is my back and these are my sides. So we're going to start by putting the back onto the base. That piece sits flush with the back of the base and of course flush on each side. When we put our side pieces on, they're going to sit inside of this L. So they're still sitting on top of the base, but in front of this back piece. So right in here. And then I always do a dry fit just to make sure it's going to fit. Before I glue those drawer fronts on, I want to add the little bit of decorative piece that I had planned. Before I glue those front pieces on, I want to add the little decorative piece that will match it to the desk. So in the desk, I added this extra piece that kind of sits on top of this. And I want this credenza to match the desk, so I'm going to be adding that onto there as well. So I'm going to cut this so I have about a two millimeter border all the way around. I'm going to glue and clamp that piece onto the front.
We'll do the same for the other piece. We're also going to add our handles here as well before we put them onto the drawer. So I'm just going to drill, this is a one millimeter bit. Just going to drill a hole all the way through. I'm going to use the same brads that I used in the desk to make the handles for the credenza. Um, again, because I want it to look like a match set. All right, let's attach. Okay, so to attach, I want to make sure that this fits in there flush when I'm done. And it's tricky to do that if the drawer is out. Um, because if you're off a little bit on either side, your drawer may end up being crooked. So what I typically do is I leave the drawer inside the space. Let's take a toothpick and even that glue out so that it doesn't spill out the sides and glue right to the cabinet itself. Run my finger along the outside and then I'm going to just drop that back in. Push it down to where it needs to be and then I'm going to take my drawer piece and I'm just going to slide it into that space so that it's even. And just by applying pressure now, the, of course, the back of the drawer front is sitting against those three sides we put glue on. And whether or not it's completely straight in the back doesn't really matter. Um, what's ma what matters is that this piece is nice and even all the way around. And then when I pop it out, the drawer is exactly where it needs to be. So I'm going to do that same thing to the bottom. I'll leave this one out for now. I'm going to do the same treatment on the outside of the cupboard doors. So I have cut two pieces of that wood. We're going to glue it in just like we did on the drawer fronts. We'll have to clamp it. So we'll have to leave the drawers open once we've got it on there straight. Clamp it and then we'll apply the door handles the same way as well. I'm going to add the top on next and as you may be able to see there I've tapered off a little bit on each side it's going to fit flush on the back and the front but it's going to have an overhang on either side like that so we're going to go ahead and glue that on and again we're going to weight it down and use some masking tape Now that all the pieces are put together, I'm going to add some wood filler in on some of the cracks and see if I can't get a smoother finish.
So now that it's all sanded, it actually fills those quite well, but um, we'll see after the stain goes on. Um, I do have this one little gap here on the bottom, but I'm not too worried about that. You won't ever see that. Um, but some of these other edges um, look actually quite a bit better. You can't really see the cracks. I'm hoping once the stain goes on there that you won't see the line either, but let's give it a coat of stain and see how it looks. I used just one coat of the stain and then two coats of podge over top to give it a little bit of a shiny look. I think that the wood filler certainly did its job. I like how it's filled in those cracks, uh, which I guess is the purpose of wood filler, right? Um, did it make it invisible, those lines? No, um, it didn't, but that's okay. Um, I still like the fact that it looks smoother. Now um, it doesn't look quite as choppy, so. So yeah, here we go. So we've got our two drawers that open and those I suppose will be filled with things like paper and office supplies. And then we also have our two drawers that open which will have hanging folders and uh, maybe a few other things, I'm not sure. Um, but that will be a nice accompanying piece to the desk and we'll sit in the room off to the side. That is the credenza, and that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks very much for joining me and for following along. I always appreciate um, everyone that tunes in every couple of weeks for my videos, and we will see you next time. Bye now.